This is another Newton's Law FRQ style question taken from 1999, B5. This one deals more with centripetal force. There's a coin of some mass here placed on a disc. This distance from the center of the disc as shown above. This is like a record player or a turntable or something, and there's something that's on it. The disc rotates at a constant rate and a counterclockwise direction is seen from above. The coin does not slip and the time it takes for the coin to make a complete revolution is 1.5 seconds. The figure below shows the disc and coin as viewed from above. So this is like the side view. And this is the bird's eye view. Draw and label vectors on the figure below to show the instantaneous acceleration and linear velocity vectors for the coin when it is at the position shown. So it's asking us right here to just draw and label the vectors of acceleration and velocity. So that's not a free body diagram, right? It's asking us for acceleration and linear velocity, as opposed to angular velocity, which we haven't really covered yet, but we've mentioned a little bit. Now, before I do that, I'm going to actually go ahead and draw the free body diagram up here. It doesn't ask for it. Sometimes they don't ask for things. It doesn't mean it's not still a good idea to do it. You should sort of just do it automatically. You shouldn't just do it if you're told. You should do it all the time because it's a good skill to develop, works very quickly, and it might help you out later. So there's going to be some weight like that. It's going to be some normal like that. And then it's going around in a circle, which means there has to be some sort of centripetal force, some force pointing towards the center of rotation. Now, the thing you have to understand is what that force is, right? That is the weight. That's the normal force. What is the force that keeps this coin on the turntable? That's friction. And you can calculate that friction as you normally do with this normal force. So now we're asked to show the acceleration and the linear velocity. Well, looking up here, we know these vertical forces, they should balance, right? There's a force of the, the normal forces like facing out of the page now, whereas the weight is facing into the page. And the force of friction is the unbalanced force. And that points towards the center, which means that is also the direction of the acceleration, which is centripetal since it is rotating at a constant rate. And the velocity at this moment would point that way because we're in a counterclockwise circle right here at this edge. So at that moment, it's moving this way. Now, these are just some diagrams showing the vectors. This is not a free body diagram. And we can't add these vectors up, right? You can't add velocity to acceleration. You can add a force to a force but you can't add a velocity to an acceleration. It's like, what's an apple plus an orange? Well, it's an apple and an orange. You can't say it's two apple oranges. It's just one apple and one orange. So there's our diagram of those two vectors. B, determine the linear speed of the coin. I'm just trying to find the speed of the coin at this moment. Well, you could start 
trying to relate the centripetal force and all that. Right? And you could probably go ahead and do that. The most straightforward thing to do here is this speed is going to be two pi r over the period, right? Distance over time, the distance of one orbit over the time of one orbit. So that is two pi times 0.14 meters over 1.5 seconds. It's the time it takes to complete that orbit. If you do that calculation, it comes out to 0 0.5864. Four seconds, which is well about zero point five nine seconds. All right, on to part C. Determine the rate of rotate the the ro rate of rotation of the disk is gradually increased. So we start speeding this up. So it takes less and less time to complete those orbits, or it's going faster and faster. The coefficient of static friction between the coin and the disk is zero point five. So now they're telling us what that coefficient is. The coefficient of friction. Determine the linear speed of the coin when it just begins to slip. Okay. Always good to do Newton's second law statements. Some of the forces in X is M A X. The sum of the forces in Y is M A Y. What are the forces in the X direction? There's only friction. And what kind of acceleration is it? Well, it's centripetal. V squared over R. And what are the forces in the Y direction? There is normal and there is weight. Equals. The acceleration in the y direction is zero. It's not moving up or down. So Fn equals Fg, which is mg. So this force of friction, well, that is, we're trying to find here this linear speed of the coin when it just begins to slip. So we're looking for this V. And we don't know this force of friction, but we know that there's a relationship between the frictional force and the normal force. So mu, and that's gonna be, and the normal force we know is just the weight. So that's mu m g equals m v squared over r. M's cancel. So v equals root mu r g. And it's technically a static coefficient in this case. We can do this as an equality because we're asking when it just starts to slip. That's the limit, the maximum value of the static frictional force. So that is the square root of 0 0.50 times the mass. 0 
point zero zero five. I'm sorry, not the mass. The radius r zero point one four meters over nine point eight meters per second squared. You do that calculation and it comes out to zero point eight two eight three meters per second, which is about 0 0.83 meters per second. So we went from a slower speed of about, uh, so right down here, I realized I, I didn't even realize this here. Right. Here, this was the wrong, these are the wrong units right there. That's This is meters per second. Meters per second, right? Meters per second. Right? This was the speed we calculated. So we went up from this almost 0.6 meters per second to a little over 0.8 meters per second. So a substantial increase in speed. So we were certainly not near our maximum value at this point. Our maximum frictional force, that is. Finally, part D. If this experiment in part C were repeated with a second identical coin glued to the top of the first coin, how would this affect the answer to part C? Explain your reasoning. Well, what would happen? Well, we're looking at this equation, V equals root mu RG. If you notice, there's no mass term in there. The masses cancel. The mass is involved in the frictional force. More mass would mean more friction, right? But it would also be more normal. So, Ultimately, it doesn't look like it changes that speed. So there would be no change because there is no, or because maybe we should say the velocity or speed, the speed is independent of the mass. as shown in the C calculation. So that's pretty much it. I hope that is helpful. Have a good evening or morning, wherever you are.